Thanks for your patience and staying with us. Uh, it's time to go to the press now and see what the headlines are. Comrade Ad Mark Adebayo, National Spokesperson, CUPP, has just joined us. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Yangul. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm surviving like every other Nigerian. <laughs> okay. You are, you, are among the, you are among the lucky few. <laughs> yes, yes. If you survive, you're lucky. And that is just a fact in yeah, Nigeria yeah. today. Uh, well, we're going to be looking at some uh, newspapers, the Tribune, uh, the Guardian, the Daily Trust, and the Punch newspaper. Let's begin with the Tribune, with a story that uh, is on all the papers. The leading story here is Fubara Talks Tough. Atiku warns has caught stop CBN from releasing a location to River State. Remember that River State, uh, the, CB, the court has said that they should not get allocations anywhere anymore because of what is going on. Uh, defection, court strikes out pro wiki lawmakers suit against INEC PDP orders. Uh, that is, uh, those are the writers here uh, under that story. So I'd like to hear your take on what is going on, the court ruling and the fate of uh, River State as it were. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it is uh, extremely disappointing and sad and saddening that uh, uh, a president like uh, President Bola Tinumbu that we thought was a, a Democrat, that we thought was a nationalist, that we thought was an activist, will become president and begin to make a, a subnational, a state, suffer the same fate he suffered under President uh, Obasanjo, who illegally, illegally confiscated the rightful allocation of legal states for political reasons. And now, one would have thought that when he was governor, he suffered that kind of fit. One would have thought that he would avoid of inflicting such, you know, aberration on any any governor or any state, for in the name of political exigencies, in the name of polit politicking. In the name of politicking. Now, you went ahead to get a court injunction saying that you not release a rightful allocation to a state that deserves it because of political differences. You know, so um it is um, it's quite unfortunate. You see, look, these people who are Missouri who are governing this country today, you know, uh behave like poor students of history, poor students of history, a little crisis that started. In one corner of the then southwest region of Nigeria, killed the first republic. Killed, you know, killed the first republic. A little crisis that started in Odo State in 1983, after the MPN rigged, brazenly rigged that election, the election of that state, that led to riots, burning, and killing the rest of that, escalated around the country and killed the second republic. Now we are in the third republic. I know that uh, political, uh, maybe I, I don't want to call them ignor ignoramuses. They call this uh, one fourth, the fourth republic. When did we have the third republic? We, are we going to say the government under a military general, Babangida, was a republic? It wasn't. So probably it was a half, half republic. But this is the third republic, or maybe the third and half republic, because we cannot say. Uh, it was a republic under a military that boot. No, no, it couldn't So this is the, authentically this is the third republic. Now, now they, they, they are now overeating the polity. You know, look at the atrocious economic policies of the government that is creating serious suffering, hunger, and anger in the land. That is there. And now you are going to refer to stoke the uh, the, the ember of of mitigatable crisis because it is unconstitutional. You know the the. The constitution, the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, remains the political legal tender of Nigeria and must be adhered to by government agencies, by people in power, by regular citizens, and all residents of, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, for you to seize the allocation of a state is not only illegal, it is unconstitutional and it is criminal, and as a matter of fact, it is inhumane. And as, in fact, very, very senseless, you know. It is reprehensible in all in all ramifications. So, um, what has happened? Well, they could uh, the judiciary must live above board. The judiciary must not allow itself to be politicized to the extent of making such ridiculous 
you know, rulings and injunctions. It is anti-democratic, it is unconstitutional, it is illegal, and it is even senseless to, to, to do that. You know, the, the, the allocations are constitutional matters to the subnationals, which must be released by the federal government to the states. And for you, for other, because of political exigencies, because of uh, political king and all the rest of that, because of uh, political contestations between uh, uh, among individuals, you now make that a state matter, and now you are now using quote unquote federal minds to oppress to suppress river state. It's quite unfortunate. And the way they are going, it is not the protesters they are arresting. It is not the people who are speaking on social media that they are, they are, they are intimidating. It is not the people that are expressing their opinions that they are repressing, that are a threat to this democracy. It is these same politicians who have not learned their lesson from the first and second republic failures that are now overeating the polity and creating and causing crisis that is likely, that is, a, that is a threat to this democracy, to this civil rule. Hopefully Nigeria will graduate from mere civil rule to democracy. Here now, we have a president that has, we have a civil rule that has been tyrannized and militarized by the people in power because of their selfish, self-centered, uh, according to Shino Ajibi, you know, of blessed memory, self-centered petitionism because of their own selfish political interest. They are now intimidating the whole state. They are now holding a whole people, you know, hostage because of political differences. Mm. How can you call these people Democrats? Oh, How well. can you call these ones Democrats? They are not. So all the while, they have been pretenders. As, uh, pretending to be Democrats, whereas they have military mentality of governors. And that's what we are seeing now. Because there's no excuse under this one for the allocations of River State to, to be withheld by the federal government. Just because of the altercations between Fubara, the governor of Fubara, and the former governor. And maybe this will teach everybody a lesson that governorism in Nigeria policy is an aberration that will not do anybody any good. That it's, it is counterproductive to the development, to the progress of this country. Even it is counterproductive to the interest of the godsons and goddaughters and the godfather. Because at the end of the day, every godson will liberate himself from the grips and the crushes of the political god godfather. And that is what we are seeing now. But, but if President Tinubu because of his political affiliation with Wilke, he's ready to sink this republic. Well, it's left to him. History, history is not going to judge him well if he allows this thing to continue to escalate like this. Mm. Uh, at the level of CPP, we call for the immediate release of the, all the allocations to, to the river state. Or that knows, because the river state has not, there is no law that empowers the federal government to confiscate, to seize, to corner the allocations belonging to the subnationals. They don't have such powers only have the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. So what they are okay. doing now, it is yeah. unconstitutional. What uh, they are well, doing now, well, it is illegal. What well, they are doing we, now... We see that, um, like, like you said, even this topic is going to be treated even more later on on the show, but uh, I needed to get your opinion as an activist and a concerned citizen as well. Uh, but you're talking about fe federation or uh, federating units and all that and how this democracy may not be uh, convenient for the Nigerian people. And it brings me to the next uh, uh, headline here. It's on The Guardian and it's also on The Tribune. But let's take this one on The Guardian. Uh, it says, tax reform bills, Ndume, Arewa Group, Lockhorns, as NGF traditional rulers meet. Remember that the uh, northern uh, governors and some traditional uh, rulers came out to say that the tax reform bill will not be favorable to uh, the north. Uh, because of especially the, the sharing formula and so many other things. And uh, there's now this talk around it. So I'd like to have your opinion on it. In fact, that same story on, um, on the Tribune is saying fresh controversies over Northern Governor's opposition to tax reform bill. What is your take? Well, uh, it is not just about the North. Uh, I, I think we shouldn't limit it to, to the North. It is not favorable to anybody, to any Nigeria, to any part of this country. For anybody to even think under this atrocious economic situation of, do, of, of, of a tax regime that will be more injurious to businesses, small and big businesses, and individual pockets, for anybody to be thinking about that now, it shows the level of callousness and thoughtlessness of the people in, in power. Because it is not, it's not about taxes now. It is about 
getting things right. It is about, you know, reducing the suffering in the land. It is about relieving the pains of Nigerians. It is not to inflict more pains on Nigeria, but it doesn't seem that this president or the people in power now, they don't, it doesn't seem that they care at all anyways. You can see two or three days ago, they've increased the pump price of fuel again, you know, by another, you know, uh, 10% or 15%, you know. So they don't care. Maybe they are going to 2,000 dollars per liter. We don't know. They don't really care. They don't care about what's happening. The strongest they don't argument. Care about the, the, the strongest argument. Of they don't care. The strongest argument that uh, these uh, northerners are bringing is on the sharing formula, especially of the value-added tax. Uh, it's like the states that generate this VAT more will get more out of uh, this when it is shared, and they don't like this. They say it's going to uh, be unfair to the north and all that. So. If it's on the sharing formula, will it still be? Will it still have the kind of argument that you have for it? We know that adding more tax to the Nigerian populace is a very, very dangerous thing uh, because the survival of the people is at stake. But if it comes to uh, maybe the same tax that we are paying and a different sharing formula for whatever is uh, accruable to the state and accruable from the state, uh, then will you still have the same argument? Well, is it in terms of the sharing formula, I think that's a kind of a conundrum there. Uh, being that, uh, you know, there are some items that are banned in the north, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, alcohol and coal. You understand? Uh, these items are banned in the north, and uh, southern states allow them. So, the, the, the idea, the argument over the years has been that uh, you cannot uh, be collecting fat from an item that you have, you have banned in your own domain. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is there. If the that one, uh, but, but uh, uh, they must find a, polit a political solution to that because if the northern states are feeling marginalized in a way, I think uh, they must find a political solution to that. For me, uh, that, 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 that that's something that they should sort out among themselves. It doesn't have to do anything with the with the with Nigerian people, you know. But the, the thing is that if you look at the whole, if you look at, at the whole package, you will see elements of increases. Or elements of double, triple, uh, quadruple taxations there because uh, they are desperate looking for money here and there everywhere. Rather than plugging the, the, the loopholes in in, in, go in government, rather than reduce the cost of governance, you know, which is why they engage in the disingenuous policy of subsidy of precipitated subsidy removal that, that, that is causing untold hardships on every Nigerian today, on all Nigerians today who are not in power, who are not in government, you know, who are not. Uh, who don't have patronage of government. So that is the issue. So uh, uh, in that one, the area of, uh, like I said, some items have been banned, you know, so the, the, the argument is that you cannot be collecting fat on an item that uh, nobody is selling in your, in your domain and uh, on the basis of uh, maybe um, derivation and the rest of that. But they should find a political solution, a kind of balance. At no state, no region, no zone of this country must, must feel marginalized. That one, they can sort that among themselves. But the idea... Of even one percent or zero point one percent increase in any taxation uh, against Nigerians is going to lead, is going to end in, in, in disaster because people are already being pushed to the wall and now they are being pushed inside the wall and uh, by the time uh, the people will turn back, mm. I am afraid for this uh, so-called uh, democracy because the people in power really don't care and uh, it, 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 and it's very bad. It's very bad. All of us we believe that all arms must be on deck. To be able to salvage this country, to be able to save this country, to be able to make this country, to get this country online towards some kind of progress and development and advancement, like other countries, like even Asian countries that are of the same league with Nigeria. But we have people in power who don't seem to think. Who don't seem to think? Oh, we, 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 uh, somebody was uh, we were, uh, we were discussing yesterday, and somebody we said, I said this government is a very wicked government. Somebody said it's also incompetent. I think it's a combination of wickedness and incompetence that we are witnessing now. That is the kind of result we are seeing now. And it's quite unfortunate. One will have, nobody believed that a president in would, would be as clueless as this, politically and economic, economically and socially speaking. It's quite unfortunate. So, all these things we are discussing. These are uh, all the problems you have in this country to resolve these issues are not rocket science. And it's unfortunate, and let me put it on record that it's unfortunate that Nigerians did not listen to uh, Mr. Uh, Adewale Adebayo, the presidential candidate of SDP in 1990, in 2023. This was the man that is 
I, I'm not a member of SDP. I'm not. I'm a member of Labour. I'm a card carry member of Labour Party. But it, it was anyway at the only of the SDP that dissected and interrogated the issue of subsidy removal vis-à-vis -vis the economic development of, of the country and concluded that there are other there are about 100 other ways by which you can raise funds rather than remove the subsidy. And he said, a, 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 a government under his presidency will never remove subsidy. We did not listen to him because and these people that were that were voted for. Whether by hook or who, all of them said they were going to remove the subsidy. But the one man that came and said that removal of subsidy was not necessary, what you need to do is to cut cost of governance. The crazy cost of governance. You know, in a, in a, under a, a suppressed and a repressed economy like this, we have a president who can remove 150 billion to go and buy a private jet, to go and buy a presidential jet, that can remove a billion naira, one billion, to buy one car for the president. So, uh, you, you are not plugging that. Now, what you are experiencing uh, uh, is now tokenism. They say they are reducing the cost of governance and the council, ministry of sport. Now, that's how sports, and that's what commission should be having issues that have to do with sports. We are call, cutting uh, delegation to outside what we are cutting, comfort. It, that is that, that is objection, objectionable tokenism. Well, uh, how much are you getting from all, the, all of that? How much? How much? When these people are collecting the kind of humongous salaries and hours that they are collecting at the National Assembly, at the governors, the commissioners, the ministers, and everybody in power, you know, that is where you should target to raise trillions of naira, trillions of naira. Okay. If you look at the constitution of the national uh, constitution, you, you see that uh, state assemblies have control over local governments in a way, but these same local governments still have their own uh, legislature. So what are we doing? Why are we? If you know that the state legislatures will be legislating for local government, then remove the, remove the councillors and let, only, let the chairman, let the state uh, assembly be legislating for local government. Anna. Because why, why should we have two legislative assemblies legislating for one local government, the state and local government? One. Yeah, and then the the, state, the, for the, the for that is also like on the national, where we have uh, House of Reps and uh, Senate, uh, the, the, the Senate, and I don't know what what we need those two houses for anyway. But let's move over uh, from uh, political matters. Let's go over to... Let's go to another matter, uh, Mr. Adebayo. Remove the Senate, leave the House of Representatives there. So, well, we will get to that one day. Uh, petrol rising cost is what is my concern right now. It's on the Punch newspaper, and it's duplicated in all other newspapers. On the Punch, it reads that uh, marketers write dangote over bulk purchase deal. The writer is Ipman Petroan I Refineries 500 million PMS reserve queues in Abuja after NNPCL price hike. Is on the daily trust as well. Dangote marketers in petrol fresh row over sell, sale of petrol. And they are saying we are ready to buy from private refinery, but there's a but there by marketers. Nigerians demand fuel price reduction and availability. We also have it on the Tribune that says Ipman replies Dangote. Marketers spend days at your refinery unable to load petrol. Remember that Dangote had said that it's the marketers that are not coming. There are they are instead importing uh, this product and all that. So this is where we are right now, back and forth yet again in the petrol, or in the case of petrol availability in Nigeria. We 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 really honestly we, we are yet to get to the bottom of what is really happening uh, between these independent marketers and that good refinery. I, I don't know who is telling the truth or, or who is telling us uh, something that is not uh, or the alternative truth. We, we we don't know yet, but. Uh, um, everything boils down to leadership failure at the level of gov government. You see, because you know they just look at the way they are increasing the pump prices of fuel every day now. It has become a, a, a daily affair now that you, you buy fuel at one thousand uh, and thirty naira yesterday. Today you wake up is now one thousand and one hundred naira, one thousand one hundred twenty five naira, one thousand two hundred naira. Officially, you know, over at the NNPC, you know, um, it shows. The level of disdain that the current government owes Nigerians. It shows how, how much they really don't care about the welfare of the people. Even though the constitution, when they were swearing in, they were swearing, they were sworn in on the basis of the of uh, protecting the welfare and the security of the people. What all they are doing is cutting the welfare of the people, all they are doing is destroying the economy, all they are doing is pushing us backward, all they are doing is creating terrible situation for the people. You know, 
um, you'll be surprised that uh, about um, how the population of Nigeria, or, or, or how the, the population of Nigeria you know, go to bed hungry every night, and it's increasing exponentially. And this is a government, this is a president that says that, that the wife told us that, oh, we already made our money, we are coming to make your lives better. Now, what is, what is happening? They are worsening the situation. In fact, there's no excuse whatsoever. A time is coming, see, they are pushing the people to a level of anger that, that in it, when it implodes, they themselves cannot be able to contain. All in Nigeria, I mean, Nigeria police, they said whatsoever will not be able to contain what is going to come. Because at the point, the people, the people are asking now. Uh, they, they are asking now. Now, the time is coming, they are going to demand as of a right. And they are going to demand it in a way that will be unequivocally intractable. So that is what this government should know. That that the people who are silent, in fact, the silence of Nigerians now is extremely foreboding. It's extremely foreboding. It, it, it is like something, it's the kind of silence you get, the, the kind of inactivity you get in the ocean when there's, there's about to be a tsunami. And they better listen now and listen well and do something about it. Even people like uh, people like Senator Ndume, a member of their own political parties, uh, their own political party, and some other people of conscience, even within the APC, are coming out to say that, look, what you are doing to Nigerians, hey, you are, it, it is endangering our democracy. It is endangering our security. It is endangering even our sovereignty as a nation. Because by the time the people arise, by the time people, people begin to resist, by the time the people begin to speak up in a manner that they will not listen to anybody again. This government will not be able to contain what is going to come. So, it is not about politics. It is not about opposition or people in power. It is about common sense. All of us can see, all of us can hear, that we can see that this government does not have an idea of how to manage the economy of the country in a way that will be beneficial to the citizens of this country. In a way that the resources of this country can okay. be maximized for the joy, the benefit, and for the peace of the people of Nigeria. Except for the people, only for the people in government. That is why you can see them, they can slap an Uber driver, and they say they can make people disappear, yeah. and not really happen. That is right, why they really have the temerity yeah. to begin to continue to increase the heavy loads on Nigerians. I mean... Okay, oh, Comrade Adebayo. Oh, no. it's, it's, really, it's really unfortunate, but um, like you said, we'll get to that point one day. Whether we get to that place peacefully or otherwise, we must arrive at the point where Nigerians no. will have their own destinies in their own hands. But that, this is how we will wrap up on the show, not on the show, on this segment of the show this morning. We'd like to thank you for coming uh, on this morning. Thank you so much. I just want to urge Nigeria, let's keep the hope alive, but let's be strong in our demand for a better country for ourselves and for our children yet on board. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And amen to that. We've been talking with Comrade uh, Adebayo, a, a spokesperson for the CUPP, and uh, we were looking at the headlines. We're going to take a very short break, and when we return, we will be looking at the fact that uh, uh, Budget has come up with a report that only two Nigerian states can survive without federal allocation. Stay with us.